will help others. We have it, the house holds 13, uh, and um, there's even more. I can give y'all information about it as y'all need it. Thank you. 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 Thank Bill Clifton, 109 Cabot Square. I'm here about the Jehovah Witness Church, the song that's fallen down. It's been uh, damaging the hurricane and the owner hasn't done anything about it. It's us, we'd like to see if the city maybe could get something done. Yes, sir. Um, I know that <coughs> I have reached out to that person in particularly uh, a couple months back. Uh, it was brought up to my attention uh, I did talk to Mr. Eddy about it a couple of times. He was aware of the situation, but now uh, Mr. Eddy and myself, well, we're, and of course the council, uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and start the condemnation by uh, sending a letter to them. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. You wanna help? Okay, uh, hang on, on the agenda. Okay, number six, Mayor Smith to acknowledge Ms. Sandy Trimay for her years of service. Yes, sir. Before we start, uh, our past mayor, um, I'd like for you to read something if you don't mind. If you want to come up here, you can. Uh, I'm scared now. Take <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, back, <Chuck. laughs> No, nah, you know, it's an honor for me to get to do this because. Sandy was first woman president of the Quincy Chamber, and she was called in that position in January 1978. She was elected to the Coucher Parish Police Jury in 1992 and served until her retirement in 2019, 28 years of service. That's a long time for dedicated service. A Ward 6 police juror had not been reelected to a second term for 50 years before she took office. She served as police jury's vice president, became Calcutta's uh, first woman police jury president, and in 2009, she was president of the Louisiana Police Jury Association of the State of Louisiana, and that is quite an honor for your peer to elect you to that. Uh, due to her involvement locally, statewide, and her federal relationships with the congressional delegation, she was able to make important contacts and at every level of government allowing her access to help her constituents with problems, even if it was not related to her official capacity as police jury. She uh, advocated in this capacity thousands of times during her tenure. She is responsible for procuring billions of dollars for the Quincy and its surrounding areas, including recreation, four or six fire, bucket and creek drainage, paving of all area roads surrounding the Quincy, and partnered with the city of Quincy on hundreds of projects. She loved the Quincy and has been one of its greatest ambassadors and thousands of people in government positions statewide from the governor's on down associated with Quincy as that small town where Sandy's from. And I will tell you, the 12 years I was mayor and probably how many years Buddy was mayor that she served, I can't think of a time that we ever called Sandy. We need something for the Quincy and she said, okay, let's see what we can do to get it. She was always there for you. Um, I always willing to take a phone call. I was telling Billy Bob a while ago, I called her one day, I was in a meeting in Baton Rouge, and I was coming over to the Mississippi River Bridge in Baton Rouge. I called her, I needed some help for the Quincy. And that phone conversation lasted until I pulled it in my garage and I said, Sandy, I got to get off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but she would always do it, and she never hesitated to help the Quincy. We were blessed to have her in that position. I can vouch for that. Ms. Sandy, come on up. And uh, I did want to add a, uh, echo a little bit what uh, Mr. Hennigan had said. One thing about Ms. Sandy that uh, I got to work with her just a little bit is I would call her. And she'd go, hmm, we'll get it done for you. And uh, I, I appreciate her always being a friend to De Quincey. And De Quincey came first, and she did not forget who her hometown was. 
If you'll look out here, when you go out here this part, we did a major renovation right when I came in to office, and she helped us get the money. If it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have had that. It was, uh, but again, it's her dedication, and she would never say no. Sometimes she'd go, hmm. But uh, <laughs> she'd always make sure she gets it done. So, Ms. Uh, Sandy, I just want to present this to you. It's just a small token from DeQuincy, letting you know that we appreciate what you did for this community. Thank you for being a public servant. Thank you for always keeping DeQuincy first, and we appreciate that. Thank you. really humbled and honored for this, really. But I don't know that I really deserve it, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that the 28 years, I think, that I served on the Capital Chair of the Police Bureau, I was only there because, what, you put me there every four years. And I was, uh, at first, a little green. As time went on, you learned quick <laughs> how to make things happen and what to do and where to go and how to get things done for people in your area. And that's what I love to do is helping others. That was, that's what I've always loved to do, not just being on the police jury. But believe it or not, I still do get new calls <laughs> here and there and am able to put them with the people that they need to be put with. But uh, I had fun. It was uh, exhilarating, and it really gave you a. Uh, people had hope in you, so I had to put that hope out there for the people of my district, whether it was in Starks or whether it was in De Quincey or whether it was in Edgeley or wherever it was. Uh, all of those people had problems and issues and all you do is just take one at a time and you try to do the best that you can with what God gave you and that's all I can say that I did I did the best I could I loved it I enjoyed it and thank you for this I appreciate it We've been notified by you guys several times. We owner financed the place to some people that they want it. We told them we going to tear it down. It's been about a year and a half now, and they haven't done anything with it. So we've been talking with them, and we're going to tear it down ourselves. That's our goal. I just need to know how much of a time frame. I've been trying to give them as much as possible time as possible. <coughs> but I'm going to spend the money to tear it down myself instead of paying somebody else to do it. I mean, I, I, that's just smart business on my part. But I've just been waiting to the last minute to give them a little bit of time, and they haven't come through with it. But there's so much more out here that's got to be demolished. But why are y'all just picking that one house uh, on that street alone? 
I mean, we took about 100 pictures within 50 minutes a while ago of other places all around there that I just don't understand why y'all just targeting that one place. Is it just because of the room or what's it for? I mean, I just, I need somebody. We've got the numerous complaints. The numerous, the numerous complaints. The parish, uh, the parish came in and condemned it completely. Okay, what about all the other ones that are still sitting out yeah, there? Yeah, they, they work, we're working on them. Okay. It's hard, it's, just, it's a long, drawn out process. Okay, so how much time do we have to get it demolished ourselves? Uh, I mean, I'm not going to spend ten thousand dollars to pay you guys to do a uh, demolish it. Yeah. So, what kind of time factor do you need? Uh, so, I mean, probably a, a month, okay. month and a half, two months, maybe the max. Yeah. Just so to you want to give you three months. Three months. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So let's just get that. It'll be table. Table for three months. Yeah. We'll table it for three months. Okay. Start up as of today. Thank you. Yeah. Number nine, proceed to the next step of condemnation process, which is to send condemnation to parish inspector on the structure located at 609 East Center Street. I'd like to move we proceed to the next step of condemnation process, which is to send condemnation to parish inspector on the structure located at 609 East Center Street. I second. Motion made and seconded. Roll call, please. Cameron Smith? Yes. Margaret Brown? Yes. Andy Dawkins? Yes. Jim Smith? Yes. Scott Long? Yes. <clears throat> Number 10, we got a condemnation <coughs> hearing on 120 Maple Street. I'm here. Um, first off, I'd like to apologize for not meeting you guys at the last uh, city council meeting that y'all had on the subject. I was running a little bit of a fever and didn't think it would be wise business for me to bring that cold up here and get everybody sick. Um, I was on schedule to get it done. Uh, what the mayor and city council had given to me before, uh, six months from last year, uh, beginning of July. Uh, in January, I had the first two heart attacks. Uh, a week later, I had the second heart attack that I had, which has put me very back behind schedule on things. Um, I currently have, to date, four heart attacks and 10 stents. So me doing a lot of physical labor, I'm very limited to the amount of time that I can put in on my day to get anything done. I very borrowed and stolen Dave Muir to get what I could to get people to come help me. Uh, it's very limited who wants to drive way up to New Quincy to do any work nowadays. Um, I am in the process of getting my home that I was working on done so I can move my personal belongings out of that property. Um, I, I've talked to, uh, this lady's name is here, but I talked to another representative here. Um, agreed, I understood you guys had the parish coming out. That was the next step in the line. I was a code enforcement officer for the city of Lake Charles. So I know the process, I know what you guys are doing, and I agree with it 100%. Uh, the property is and should have been condemned shortly after we moved out of the home. It is secure. There is an actual front door on it and a back door that are both locked. Uh, I know it don't look like it when you drive around it because we've got a back porch. An open back porch door and a front porch that's screened in, but there is solid doors around, and it is it does meet state specs for being a secure home. Um, there's no electricity hooked to it currently. The water should have been turned off a long time ago. The only thing that may still be hooked up is gas that should have been turned off at the meter. Um, we are looking to tear it down. I'm just asking for a little bit more leniency uh, and time to be able to get that done. Like I said, I'm <laughs> I'm battling against. Uh, and they, you know, out of things that are outside of my control and it's for my health. How much time do you ask for? How much time um, do you think you need? I've got, if I can get somebody to come up and help me, that's the hard part. I've got a day and a half worth of stuff left to do at my house before I am completely done with a little bit of repair work that had to be done there that I took care of myself. And then that house will be available for me to start moving all my personal stuff out of there. I've already talked to a contractor, actually two different contractors, about tearing down the, the structure for me. I'm just waiting for them to give me quotes back so I know that they're legitimate about what they want to do. I, I'd, I'd be lying if I gave you a timeline. I, I, I just ask for leniency, and, and I'll try to stay within the timeline that you guys set. Um, I'm at y'all's mercy, obviously, because I didn't meet the deadline the last time. Three months, do you? 
three months of work, sir. I'll take whatever I can get, and I'll definitely keep you guys up to date if I can get it done soon. Yes, yeah, sir. You do that, we'll work with you. Yeah, I, I, the property's coming down. It, it's got to be torn down. There's no, I, um, there's no floor left in the kitchen. There's no roof left in the kitchen. The front room's starting to come down as well. Uh, it is not a, <laughs> it is not or will it ever be a little home ever again. Carol, you understand it said three months, it will proceed. Yeah, I, I, Scott, I know that. Uh, and like I said, I was, I was well expecting you guys to tell me no tonight. And I, I'm okay with that. It's disheartening to me, but I do understand it. Um, like I said, I've been, been in that man's shoes. And I've gone to city council on the city side there with City Lake Charles and had to attend their properties working there. So I, I understand the process. There's no hard feelings or anything like that for the process. It is what it is. Got to follow the law. I appreciate that. Okay. I'm making a motion that we, uh, I guess, table 10, whatever we do here, and have give him uh, a make a motion giving approval and to set a level for the mayor to sign and enter into contracts and purchases up to an amount set by the, uh, this ordinance. Second. Mayor, a motion made and seconded. Roll call, please. Cameron Smith? Yes. Margaret Brown? Yes. Eddie Nichols? Yes. Jim Smith? Yes. Scott Wallace? Yes. <coughs> Number 13, introduce an ordinance and set a public hearing for September 11th. Regarding amending our personnel policy ordinance. Y'all have any questions on that? You read it, yeah. I'll make a motion to be introduced to the ordinance and set a, yeah, set a public hearing for September 11th, 2023, regarding adoption, right? No. Regarding personnel policy. I'll second. Oh. Motion made and seconded. Roll call, please. Cameron Smith? Yes. Margaret Brown? Yes. Eddie Dolphus? Yes. Jim Smith? Yes. Scott Wallace? Yes. Number 14, introduce an ordinance and set a public hearing for September 11th, 2023, regarding adopting drainage requirements. A motion to introduce an ordinance to set a public hearing for September 11th, 2023, regarding adopting drainage requirements. Second. Motion made and seconded. Roll call, please. Cameron Smith? Yes. Margaret Brown? Yes. Eddie Dolphus? Yes. Jim Smith? Yes. Scott Wallace? Yes. <coughs> Number 15, introduce an ordinance and set a public hearing for September 11th, 2023, regarding setback on property. Can we table that, please? We don't have all of the stuff together yet. If you don't mind, we'll table that and bring it back uh, for September. introduce an ordinance and set a public hearing for September 11th, 2023 to repeal and replace the subdivision requirements. I'll make a motion we introduce an ordinance and set a public hearing for September 11th, 2023 to repeal and replace the subdivision requirements. A second. Motion made and seconded. Roll call, please. Cameron Smith? Yes. Margaret Brown? Yes. Eddie Dolphus? Yes. Jim Smith? Yes. Yes. Number 17, introduce an ordinance to set a public hearing for September 11th, 2023, amending charges and interest payable for weeds and offensive accumulation. A motion to introduce an ordinance and set a public hearing for September 11th, 